Hello, I'm Terry Marr. Today we're going to learn how to live deeply in Christ and His alone. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about our great big God. We've been talking about his transcendence, how he has no limits, how he is uh, bigger than our imaginations could ever make him. Well, we're going to continue that. And as we do, my prayer to God is that our visualization of him will be bigger and greater than anything that we could ever imagine even now. We've seen some things in the past, but look for even greater things to come now and in the future. So let's get started. I want, I went to God and I asked him exactly what is it that you want for this season, for uh, this time for your people. And every time I would look up something and get ready to preach it, God would tell me, he said, Terry, I'm bigger than that. He'd say, Terry, I'm greater than that. And the more he said it, the more he would show me. And he's not showing me things that I would see normally. These are things that, like so many of us aren't aware of, that are happening in the background that we are not even aware of. So that's what he means by, Terry, there are things that you see in this natural realm, but there are things in the spirit realm that will just knock your socks off if you had any idea what I am doing and capable of doing. So in order for us to understand this, I've entitled these sessions, Living Deeply in Christ. I wanna take our visualization of God sitting on a throne high in the heavens and Jesus crouched down at his right side interceding for us that we be saved and that we don't fall. I want to get that out of our heads because it's so much bigger than that. What Jesus has done, it took, believe it or not. We really are saved. We really are belonging to God. We are his children. We are the sheep of his pastor. And because of that, we don't have to hold our breaths that we may end up doing something wrong because what we, the scripture tells us, God declares our end. He is declaring our end from the beginning. And so everything we're doing, we're just going through and reading the script that has already been imagined and created in the mind of God. And in the end, it all works out just fine. God's love is greater than anything that we could ever imagine. So I want us to get that picture in our minds as we talk today. I want to talk about the global Christ. When we think global, we're saying, well, God has made me a prophet to the nations, or God has made me an apostle to the nations. I really don't think we understand what that means. When we talk about global, we're talking about this planet. But go with me to Ephesians. Uh, let's look at Ephesians Let's see here. The first chapter, and we're going to go 15, starting with uh, verse 15, and I'm going to be going from the Message Bible. Now, as I read this, I'm going to try my best not to stop in the middle of it, but it excites me so much that I'm going to see how far I can get. But please, Holy Spirit, help us to understand and help us to hear. Let's read this. It's talking about the global Christ. This is Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. He says, that's why when I heard of the sound, the solid trust you have in Master Jesus and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I couldn't stop thanking God for you. Every time I prayed, I think of you and give thanks. But I do more than that. I ask. I ask the God of our Master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning and knowing him personally. Okay, I've got to stop right there. 
what Paul is saying to the church in Ephesus, he's telling them that I have prayed that God would make you spiritually intelligent. That's a big thing. For us to be spiritually intelligent, we don't think of God from our natural intellect. We look at him as being the God of galaxies, the God of, of infinite things. I mean, if we could really even take a second of, of to intake what God is doing this very moment, we could not even keep up because every moment is just like an eternity for him because he's doing so much to so many people and bringing us all together and we have no idea because if it's not happening in our little circle, in our little community, in our little church, we don't think much of it. But let's keep reading here and see what it is our global Christ is capable of. He says, let me go back, to make you intelligent and discerning and knowing Christ personally. He says, I'm praying that your eyes be focused and clear so that you can see exactly what he is calling you to do. Grasping the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Endless energy, get that. Endless energy, boundless strength. That's the God we serve. He has endless energy, boundless strength. Now, we, a lot of things that we do, we say we want to know what our assignment is. I want to know why I was sent to the planet. I want God to show me what it is he expects of me. And we think that mostly everything that he wants from us is going to be done in these bodies and in the flesh. But there's so much more going on that's in the spirit realm that the energy, when, when our bodies tire out, our spirit is just starting. Our spirit is endless. It has endless energy. It has boundless strength. And we've got to remember that. Even when we are sitting down and we're tired and ready to go to sleep, while we are sleeping, our spirits, glory to God, they are ministering to the people of God. There is so much that I want to minister in these sessions, and my prayer to God is that we can get it. If we can get this, we won't be able to be still. We won't be able to, to even consider some of the things we considered yesterday because this is a new day. These things have been going on all the time, but like the Bible says, Jesus said in the New Testament, he said, there's some things I can't tell you now because you can't bear it, but God's about to show it to us now. Things are about to be revealed, that God is gonna let us know the energy, the boundless strength, all of these things that he has for us that we've been doing all the time, we were just not aware of that. But let's continue. Let's go on to verse 20. This is it. Uh, message Bible. All this energy that I've been talking about, all this energy issues from Christ God, raised him from death and set him on a throne in deep heaven. Now, in, while he's on this throne in deep heaven, look at this, he is in charge of running your family? No. Running the people on your job? No. He is in charge, Christ is in charge of running the universe. Wow. The universe and everything from galaxies, come on, from galaxies to governments. That's with an S. He's running things even now. Since he has risen and he has, uh, he's, has the name above all names, he is now not only interceding for him, for us in our limited mind, that's how we've always looked at him. Now that he's done this, now he's always uh, begging, you know, that we don't fall from grace. No, he is on a throne in deep heaven and God has got him uh, running every, he's in charge of running everything in the universe, everything from galaxies to government. No name and no power exempts from his rule. Oh my God. And not just for the time being, but forever. Now I'm going to say something that, you know, you may not quite understand, but I can't help it. I just 
think differently. You know how many times we, we talk about the different planets and um, everybody's saying, well, this is the only planet that uh, can sustain life. Really? I mean, Jesus is doing all these things in galaxies and governments all over, you know, the universe. And we don't know how many universes that, it, that may be. But when we look at, let's look at Jupiter. They're saying that Jupiter is is not able because of the way it, it's, uh, the distance it is from uh, the sun and all of these things, how it cannot sustain life. All these other planets, the same thing. But just because in our finite minds, with our earth eyes, just because we can't see it, does that mean it's not there? Think about on this planet alone, there is the, the realm of the spirit. There are angels all over the place. There's uh, uh, angelic beings, heavenly hosts. There are demonic spirits. There are things happening all on this planet just because we can't see it. Is that why we're saying it doesn't exist? The Bible tells us that we serve a God who is over everything and his Christ, his son, is sitting and in charge of everything. And we are his body. We are part of everything. He is our head and we are with him. And what is so beautiful about this is it also says in uh, when Jesus was praying with his disciples, he prayed to the Father. He said, Lord, he said, I pray that these that you've given me and even the ones who are coming after them, I pray that they will be where I am. Wow, that'll knock your socks off. If you think about it, that they will be where I am. Jesus wants us where he is. How can we do that? We can't do that if every few minutes we're holding our breaths, wondering if we're going to be safe from one minute to the other, wondering if we're going to make a mistake, wondering if, if uh, we can live through uh, our lights being turned off. I lived through uh, us losing a job, or losing a loved one. I mean, God has this thing so tight and so together that if we allow him to be God, he is so ready to be God. But there are some things he just knows we're not ready for. But he has promised. He's promised, and I've... I've I've been praying about this so much because I want you, us to be ready to receive what it is God is promising. God says, I am ready to reveal some things to my people so that they can be aware that there is nothing that happens, nothing that happens in your world or in worlds beyond that he is not aware of. We have a Christ that has died for the sins of the world. He has allowed us to have the word of God before us. He's had spiritual intelligence upon the anointed ones in times past who've written the word of God, inspired words from the Father, to show us how to work, how to walk this thing out every day, every day of our lives. He is a magnificent God. Let us go to John 17. St. John 17. I want to show you something there. And as we continue, I want us to think about how big our God is and what he has promised us. We're going to look at John 17, and let's go to verse 24. And I want to read it from the Message Bible first. It says, this is Jesus talking to the Father. He says, Father, I want those you gave me to be with me right where I am. Now, not only physically with him, but he wants us to be able to think like Christ did. When Christ was here, Christ went through all of the things he had to go through, but as he was doing it, he had faith, total faith in God because God had already chosen the ones to be with him. He did not have to come to earth and then find the disciples. 
God had already ordained them. They didn't know about it, but the father did. And they were all in place and they were along the journey. What God wants us to understand is that everything he has ordained for us is along our journey. And he's done it that way so that we can know that every step we take has been ordered of the Lord, ordered to get us to the place where we can say we are where Jesus is. Jesus said, I want them to be where I am. Where is Jesus? Jesus is in the middle of the will of God, right smack dab in the middle. He is doing exactly what the Father has ordained him to be, to do, and he's right where God has ordained him to be. So what I want us to look at right now is, Lord, am I, if I'm going too fast, slow me up. If I'm too slow, you know how to speed me up. Whatever it is that you've got for me to do, I don't want to, to try to work this thing out by myself, and I don't want to be hesitant or fearful. But I want to know, I want to be able to be where Christ was as he walked this earth. Christ walked this earth with confidence. Even though he was in the flesh, he didn't talk about his condition. If you notice, no matter what it is he went through, he never dwelt on his condition. He always spoke from his position. His position was that he is the son of God. What is our position? We are the members of Christ's body. And because of where we are and who we are, then our condition, the things that we're going through at that moment, they, like, I, like the Bible says, they are light afflictions. And they are but for a moment. The troubles we have to deal with, that we spend so much time, we spend weeks in depression simply because of one thing that happened four years ago and we got stuck. We got stuck in that, in that condition and we lost four years of our lives because we were trying to figure out how to get out of it. When all the time God said, I've already made the way plain. I've already made the way clear. But the thing is, fear has caused us to not progress where God needs us to progress. And that's why we're, we're going to go through these studies right now, is so that we can realize every time we feel we're getting stuck. What do I mean by that? Sometimes a person who dies in our lives can cause us to get stuck. We'll get stuck in the past. We'll get stuck because we didn't want them to go. Even though they were suffering, even though they were going through some really bad situations, we wanted them to stay with us because we don't like change. That may be one reason Jesus said in the New Testament, he told the disciples, he said, there's some things I can't share with you now because you can't bear it. Some, some of us just can't bear change. But to be in Christ, we've got to bear change. To be in Christ, we've got to be progressive. Everything that God has for us is progressive. We, we know about the God that our great, great granddaddy preached. We know about him. God doesn't change, but the things he expects of us change because the word of God we know is quick, it's powerful, full, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing between the, deciding, the, the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. And the word is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Now, because of that, that in itself says the word, even though it, the foundations of the word does not change, the word itself is progressive in order to meet us as we begin to change. You know, I've got a, a book that's coming out uh, later this year, and it's, the name of it is When He Shall Appear. And the uh, underlabel of it says, When the Hidden Things Are Revealed. Every time God reveals something to us, he expects us to adjust to that revelation. And when we read things like we're reading now about the Christ that we have already imagined that Christ is somewhere trying to make sure and cover us to make sure we stay saved, 
But we see now he's doing so much more than that. He's way beyond that. He knows that, that we've been called. He knows that we've been chosen. And he's not worried about us. He's not worried that we're going to collapse or that we, we're going to fall because he's already said there's no temptation that will come against you that is not common to men. And because it's common, there's nothing that's happening that I have not already made a way of escape. So stop holding your breath and become progressive. Get past that thing that has caused you to shut down and to be stuck to the point that I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't go there because I'm afraid something will happen. That's fear. Fear does not belong to us. God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's what it is, it's a spirit. It's a spirit that we can overcome. We overcome everything because love sees beyond the moment. Why did I say that? Because God is love and God sees beyond the moment. And everything that happens in our lives, love is attached to it, whether we understand it or not. And love, God's love, is progressive. We've got to be progressive. So living deeply in Christ is understanding that as Christ reveals things to us, we open our eyes and we say yes to them. We stop being afraid. We stop getting to the point that we think that if, if we don't uh, uh, do what it is that we had that five-year, ten-year plan about, if we don't keep up with that, then things aren't going to work. Well, God never told you about your ten-year plan or your five-year plan that he has. And it is so much better than anything we can plan for ourselves. Because what we do, what we plan, is temporary. But everything God's got for us is eternal. So we've got to know that. So as we continue, um, I want us to look through the eyes of what God is telling us. I want us to be able to see the globalness of God, the global plan he has for us, the things that will allow us to use the energy that we have for God. Not the energy we have in our mortal bodies, but the spiritual energy. To be able to pray without ceasing. To be able to read the Word of God and understand. To be able to go places in the spirit realm. To be, to be able to understand the words that God speaks to us to not be afraid, to put fear far from us, to walk in faith, not talk about it. We've talked about faith over and over and over again. Now it's time to live that faith. True faith in God is learning how to live deeply in Christ, living deeply in him, deeply in his plan for us, deeply in the love he has for us, deeply in what he has ordained for us. As we continue, um, we, as we were talking before about being stuck, being stuck, God knew that there would be times when we would hit, it would be almost like hitting a wall, and that's to be expected. But we don't have time to hit a wall now and stay there for three and four years. We don't. Those of us who are in the body of Christ to be progressive, we've got to be able to know that whatever it is that we're going through, we must look for that way of escape that Christ talked about. He says that there is a way of escape that I've already prepared for you so that you can bear it. We don't have years to keep going by over and over again, talking to people um, about how I, I used to do this and I used to do that and I'd like to get back to it. Don't just talk about getting back to it, get back to it. Go in grace, go in the power of the anointing of God. Do what it is God has told us to do. Do it with everything within us, all the energy, whether it's spiritual or natural. Do it what God has told us to do. Do it wisely. Um, I have some things that God has shown me over the last few weeks that I had to go back and pick up. Words that he spoke to me 10 years ago. Words that he spoke to me three years ago about who I am and what he was going to do. 
And because I didn't see it come to pass in, you know, that 12-month period, I just forgot about it. But God told me, he said, Terry, go back and get it. Because I want you to be able to live deeply in me. And not only that, but teach my people how to live deeply in Christ. As a Christian, you may be aware of the journey of life you must navigate through day by day. But as a son of God, are you aware of the Father who has ordered each step, making it specific to your needs and his expectations for your growth and success along the way? Through Terry Marr's new book, Searching the Depths of God, you will discover that every step is deliberate and necessary for you to become the answer to the problems of this planet. With each chapter of her book, you will discover your role in this epic adventure called life and strengthen your resolve to please the father while recognizing he is so much greater powerful wiser and transcendent than you could ever imagine call the number on your screen now or visit terrymarministries.org to get your copy of this amazing book today hello everyone this is terry mar i'm here to promote my new book that's out God's expectations of us are great, facing the fears along the way. This book came straight out of my spirit from different experiences I've had over the last few years, where God has told me that he wanted me to do something, and he just pumped me up to the point that I just knew I could do it. He told me the things that would happen in the beginning. He even mentioned a few things that would happen at the end, but it's the middle part he didn't tell me about, and that's where the fear was. God wants us to be able not to be fearful about anything. He wants to be able to face our fears, to trust in Him, no matter how difficult it is, how impossible it may seem. So I wrote a book about it, God's Expectations of Us. Not just me, because it's not just about me. Many things we go through are not about us, it's about other people who are watching us. So this book, I think, is going to be able to help you. You can get it by going to my website, carrymarministries.org, and click on the a site that says services available. It'll take you right to the book page. And if you can read that book and just pray about what you're going through right now, you'll see a side of God you didn't know was possible. God is there for us. God's expectations of you, they're great. Be who he called you to be.